So this is uh, the showing of an eight photo array using the uh, folder shuffle method. And uh, it can, the array contains eight photographs, uh, but there are 10 folders because two of them are empty. So essentially the way you'd set this up is you make sure that your two empty folders uh, go on the bottom of the stack. And you make sure that the folder containing uh, a photograph that is going to be on the top is a folder that does not contain a photograph of your suspect. In other words, it contains the photograph um, of a filler. And then in the middle, uh, these seven folders each contain a photograph, and one of these photographs is a photograph of the suspect. So you take these seven folders that are essentially going to be in the middle of the stack, and you just uh, you just shuffle them and, uh, and mix up the order. So that when you're done, even if you know who the suspect is, you don't know which one of the seven folders contains the photograph of your suspect. And then you take the two empty folders and put them on the bottom of the pile, and you take the one containing a known filler, not your suspect, and he goes on the top of the pile. And with these 10 folders, then you're ready to show your array. Hello, Jenny. Thanks again for coming in such short notice. As I explained to you on the phone, uh, I have some photographs to show you, but before I show those to you, I have to uh, explain uh, some things to you, okay? Okay. Okay. You're being asked to view a set of photographs. You'll be viewing the photographs one at a time. Please look at all of them. I'm required to show you the entire series. They're in so at this point, the, uh, the array has already been assembled. By this point, the officer has already uh, printed a photograph of his suspect and has um, printed out the photograph of seven fillers, in other words, people who fit the same general description as the suspect. So uh, the detective then reads from uh, prepared instructions, which are uh, recommendations by the U.S. Department of Justice um, that um, uh, set the setting for the, for the showing of the array, make sure the witness understands that we don't know who actually committed the crime, that the investigation will continue after the array has been shown and, uh, and so forth. When the detective arrives here in the room, he's already prepared the array, and we know that there's ten folders containing eight photographs. The bottom two folders are empty, and the top folder contains a filler, in other words, not the suspect. Uh, the other seven have been shuffled out of the presence of the witness, and uh, the suspect in the case is somewhere in those seven folders. And once the detective reads the instructions, he begins then showing the array to the, uh, to the witness by handing over the folders one at a time. Now here in the technique being demonstrated, you see that the folders are being passed one at a time to the witness who then opens the folder, views the photograph for a short period of time, and then hands it back to the detective. And the way this is set up, you can see that as the witness opens up the folder, the folder actually blocks the detective from being able to see what photograph she's viewing. And this is another important part of the procedure because the detective is the primary and knows who the suspect is, it's important that the array be shown in such a way so that he does not know when the witness is viewing a photograph of his suspect. So the room can be configured in a couple of different ways, whether it's the witness sitting across the table or sitting next to the detective. So long as when the witness is actually looking at the photograph, the detective cannot tell which photograph she's viewing. Now, if the witness were to make an identification midway through the first showing of the array, as already instructed by the detective, the detective would continue to show the array. The witness has been instructed that she needs to see the entire series. As the witness gets towards the last couple of folders, she's telling the detective that those folders contain only blank pieces of paper. And he explains to her that that's just part of the procedure and they continue on. Can I see the fourth one again, please? In this case, the witness has not made an identification but asked to see a particular photograph again. And of course, the single photograph should not be shown. Instead, as explained in the instructions at the outset, the entire series is shown a second time. And here, of course, we don't know where the blank folders will end up or where the photograph of the suspect will end up because all 10 folders are shuffled in the presence of the witness. 
And this is done for a reason. If the witness asked to see the third photograph, for instance, we want to shuffle the order of the photographs so that the witness isn't expecting to see the third photograph in the third place, but is expected to recognize the person who committed the crime and make a clean identification. Him. Can you describe to me in words how certain you are of that identification? I'm absolutely sure this is him. At the end of the showing of the array, the witness here has made an identification. The detective uh, does not react to it, but instead asks for a statement of certainty. The detective doesn't even know if she's picked the suspect because she's handed back a closed folder. So the detective asks the witness how certain she is. In this case, she expresses that she is fairly certain. This array and her remarks written on the front of the photograph, of course, are then entered into evidence by the police department. And here she is uh, signing the instruction sheet. Thank you very much for your time, Jenny. I really appreciate it, and I'll be back in contact with you soon. Great, thank you. Thank you.